Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Redmi K20 Pro, also known as the Raphael and Raphael In. Now it's raining Android 12 ROMs for this device and the other two devices as well, and that is the reason we are having a tough time keeping up. But these are exciting times, new ROMs are coming up every day, and this is by far the best Android version that I feel that I've had custom ROMs on, Android version 12. Now today we're going to have a look at Project Radiant that is based on Android 12, and this is the preview 2 version been using it for the last two days so before we get into the details if you want to see exclusive custom rom content like this every single day please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it definitely helps and motivates the channel apart from this if you think you like chatting with different people with the same devices please join us on telegram because you do have more than a thousand like-minded people over there chatting with each other and last but not the least if you really think the hard work is worth the effort please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people. Welcome to PhoneOps. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. So what do we have here? Project Radiant 12 Preview 2, Android 12. Updated on the 21st of October, 2021, you do have the vanilla and the G apps version available. You have the changelog available on XDA developers. So let's see what the changelog says over here real quick. Wow, that's a long list. It is updated on the main post. This is a preview two. Dirty Flash might probably work from PR1. Those who need encryption, consider using Arrow Recovery by Kuber and fix a bunch of memory leaks, fix a bunch of permissions. I'm not going to be reading all of those to you. You can pause the video and you can read that because that's a long list there. Now, apart from this, you do have a support group and ROM uses OSS vendor with Perf plus kernel. SE Linux is still permissive, so keep those things in mind. Now, the moment you boot into this ROM, you will definitely notice that this is Android 12 and it is working like a charm. The reason I say that is because this has been installed on my phone for the last two to three days and uh, I've had pretty good experience. At the same time, uh, people like Pratik, Supriyansh and Sanath have been testing my ROMs these days, so they have been giving me good feedback about this particular ROM. So towards the end of the video, we will talk about the benchmark numbers, but have, let's have a look quickly what all we have. To the left, of course, you have your Google feed, which works like a charm. Now, Google feed for me and for many other people has become sort of a benchmark to test how good or bad the ROM is. And uh, yeah, it's pretty smooth. It's not 120 hertz smooth, of course, because this is a 60 hertz display. But yes, it works fine and it is definitely, definitely smooth. Now another neat addition over here is that this ROM doesn't boot with a lot of bloatware. This is the G apps version that we are talking about. It comes with a very, very basic camera application which gets the job done. Although you can install Gcam, you can install or you can try ANX camera. I've not tried ANX camera on Android 12. Probably there will be a video coming on that soon. Now if you go to the top, you do have your quick tiles, you do have your power menu and your settings shortcut over here. As you can see, all the features are available. And you do have your screen record option, which allows you to use internal and external audio, right? So if you click start, you get a timer over here and the phone starts recording the screen. Now, once you start screen recording, let's see if we have any jitter or any stutter over here. Well, at least I find it smooth. I don't see any jitters, any stutters at all. Yeah. So this is definitely smooth and it is working perfectly fine. Even when the screen recording is on, so let's go ahead and stop the screen recording here. I don't see any major issues with the screen recording. So maybe you can try recording the screen while playing the games. And if you actually go to the quick tiles again, let's see if we have any additional one of those. We have extra dim, storage, focus, live caption, moto audio. So these guys have added moto audio as well. That is something really neat. So let's go to system. And as you can see, you have multiple options over here. So if you go to about, you go to Android version, you keep tapping Android version, you do have your Android 12 Easter egg. There you go. And this is Project Radiant Preview 2. That is their logo. Maintainers is this guy and that is your security patch. Of course, this is using a perf kernel, so you should get a balanced experience is what I'm saying. Now, moving on, if you actually go to settings over here, you do have network and internet over here. Let's... Yes. So in network and internet, you have your Wi-Fi, all the advanced Wi-Fi options are available and they work absolutely fine. Under mobile network, you do have Wi-Fi calling. You can go ahead and enable that. So if you say, go ahead and make a call to anyone. Right. 
as you can see the wi-fi calling icon is present so wi-fi calling is working absolutely fine now apart from this you have hotspot data saver and vpn and under connected devices you have your bluetooth which is working absolutely fine you have a recent apps default apps notification history very important feature always go ahead and enable it it works like a charm you have bubbles as well right so if you go to battery you do have thermal profiles over here and as you can see i have added thermal profiles for my benchmark applications and for gaming you can go ahead and change the thermal profile to say gaming over here you do get the 180 hertz touch sampling rate which works absolutely fine i've not tested it but yes that feature when available it works fine in most of the roms you can go ahead and enable battery percentage then you have storage you have sound you have the direct sound enhancer with hi-fi available so that is something really really neat apart from this if you go to display you do have customization for your lock screen and you do have screen timeout and stuff like that you can go ahead and enable or disable the light or dark theme that is completely fine you can go ahead and enable boosted colors or adaptive colors that thing is that option is working absolutely fine now you have something called as ambient display so let's go ahead and have a look at that let's go ahead and lock the screen maybe there you go now as you can see it's a very very fainted one but ambient display is there and the FOD works absolutely fine. So, especially for people who are using the Redmi K20 Pro, the FOD is a very, very important feature to check if it is working fine or not. And for me, it has been working fine in low light and almost all sorts of conditions. It has been working absolutely okay, as you can see. And remember, this is a preview build. This is not even a, you know, a final release of some sorts. So, if you have any bugs, well, the bugs will be there. So, just go ahead and report them in the group. So you do have Moto Dolby Audio over here. You can go ahead and enable with smart adjustments and all the other options. That definitely makes a difference to the way you listen to your music. So that is something really, really neat. Now, overall, if you talk about the UI smoothness, it is absolutely fine. The charging speeds are absolutely fine for me. 27 watt charger works absolutely okay. I've not had any major issues with that. And if we have a look at Accu battery over here, I've not activated it. So we'll leave that alone. But if you actually have a look at settings and you go to battery, you click on this, you do see that I've unplugged three hours back. I've had 35 minutes of screen on time and we have 24 hours left. So you can easily get through a day when it comes to, you know, battery backup and charging. So it's absolutely fine. The charging speeds, the battery backup are pretty decent. It might not be as good as MIUI or something that is rock solid on Android 11 but it's definitely good for an early release of a custom ROM which is based on Android 12. So now let's quickly go ahead and have a look at the benchmark numbers so that we can understand what exactly the performance is like on this particular ROM. The first thing we'll look at is the CPU throttle test. Now, as you can see over here, CPU throttled to 93% of its max performance and the average score was 170,999 GIPS. If you actually move to Geekbench over here. The Geekbench scores are also pretty decent. It's not extremely high, but 738 single core and 2549 multi core is absolutely okay. So I've not tried gaming on this very soon. Maybe I'll start gaming on Android 12 ROMs and I'll start making gaming reviews again. But for now, we have a lot of ROMs moving to Android 12. So it is very important to make a video on each and every ROM and let you guys know what to be expected should you flash and try it or not. Android 12 ROMs, in my opinion, are going in the right direction. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about Project Radiant. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.